If you're a leader, CEO, entrepreneur, business owner, corporate manager, runs the gamut, have you ever found yourself saying, you know, there's just somebody on my team that just doesn't quite get it, you know, and no matter what I do, whatever I try, they just aren't coming around. I do good cop, I do bad cop, I support, I do tough love and still nothing. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's probably something that you've missed and that is what we're going to talk about next. Hi, I'm Daryl Black, and if we haven't met before, I have many, many years, over 30 years, in fact, of experience responding to emergencies and disasters, and I help CEOs and entrepreneurs and business owners and corporate managers amplify their leadership, connect with the team that they support, and I've learned over all of those years a lot of really specific details and strategies and, and techniques, and it's those that I bring to the market and I bring to you. So let's talk about this issue. I've heard this time and time again, and, and this goes back to our previous episode. So if you haven't gone uh, and, and reviewed that, go ahead and, and pop back because we're talking about accountability and so many times we struggle with it. And, and as leaders, holding people accountable, including ourselves, is something that is is really, really important. It's one of the main jobs of our of leadership, one of the main tasks, one of the main things that we need to do. To review, first thing we need to do, even before we can hold people accountable, you know, in terms of performance management and coaching and all those things, we have to make sure that we have set the stage, that we have set those expectations. And if you recall from the previous episode, there were two general ways. One, level one, I call it, and that is the, the intent-based or end state. And that's where I give them the destination. I give the person the destination. I give them the, the what right looks like. And that individual or that team goes about and, and meets that end state. The, the roadmap, the how, that's not up to me. That's up to them. So if they're really experienced um, and, and or you want to develop them now, that's what you would do is you would use the end state or intent level one. But what about the, 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 the folks that are less experienced or maybe they need a little bit more coaching or guidance, if you will? Well, that's when you go to a level two and that's where you get into more specifics around the details with regard to said expectations. And I went through the, the <clears throat> expectations framework on a previous episode, but it basically it comes down to a two-way dialogue where me as a leader gives a task. So task A to you or the team, you ask questions about it, seek clarity, uh, and then I offer up whatever support I need and, and we just go back and forth. And then at the end of the conversation around the framework, we decide and we both agree that this is what is being asked and these are all the variables that go into it and then and only then at that point do we have a situation when we can now move forward and uh go to the next step so what is that next step well once we've gone through that initial expectation setting we need to make sure that as leaders we don't just forget what's going on now. We don't now turn our attention completely to something else. Yes, if we set good ex expectations, we can focus on other things, but we always have to be going back to our folks, back to the team that we support to make sure that they're getting what they need. And we also need to get regular and consistent updates. Now those updates uh, should be in the form of regular meetings. So what goes into those meetings? Well, obviously a quick review of what the expectations are. And then this is now where we get into a lot more leadership elements, for example. So we call this the follow-up and it requires a few different skills that we're going to talk about at a high level here in this episode. One of which is a category that, or a set of skills that we call active listening. And what active listening is, is basically that it's it's actively listening i know it's not rocket science folks but unfortunately as human beings we uh we're not really good listeners frankly so there are a couple of techniques that we're going to talk about that 
pertain directly to this follow-up and then consequence, uh, consequently the, the step after the follow-up. So the one first one is inquiry. And what inquiry is, is essentially using open-ended questions or an open-ended question. An example would be, what are your thoughts on blank? What are your feelings about blank? So in the context of the project or the task or the initiative, it'd be, so what are your thoughts on how things are going? What are your feelings on how things are progressing? And the difference between an open-ended question and a closed-ended question is simply a closed-ended question is one that uh, can have a yes or no answer, like just a one-word answer. A best example, I spoke about my son, best example would be talking to your kids or a kid, hey, how was school? Good. Awesome. Okay, good talk. Good talk. How about we just drive in silence now for the rest of, uh, rest of the drive until we get home? Uh, that's that's good good connection time so that'd be an example of a closed-ended question it's requiring just a yes or no or a one word answer now that certainly does not drive a rich conversation a very good conversation particularly when you're trying to support your team so two of the ways to do that are two words that i use often with open-ended questions what are your thoughts on what are your feelings on okay so that would be part of the the follow-up that that meeting after you've met with you've had those expectations setting or goal setting whatever that might be right now this is so but but you're you're actually paying attention to the answer that's kind of the key because you need to actively listen because that individual cannot just say yes or no good or bad or fine they actually you're forcing them to expand on truly how things are going and you'll get a lot more information. Now, not only is it just in the words that they're using, but pay particular attention, if at all possible, to their body language, the tone of their voice, the pace of their voice, those sorts of things. That's where video, you know, it, I get it, I get it. We're not having the same face-to-face -face conversations that we used to, at least uh, not anytime soon. And so, if, if possible, have a conversation over video, and even failing that, just, you know, phone call, phone call. And I totally recognize that nobody uses the phone like this anymore. Totally get it. But you want to be paying attention to those things that you can only get via telephone or video or face to face, all of that nonverbal, for example. So that will, that will give you all the information that you need and will give you more information than, than what you need in a lot of cases. So be open. Be actively listening and then you'll be able to really gauge how things are going so let's say now that you've picked up on some challenges right so maybe um, maybe things seem to be going along well for as per that individual but you can start to see some things going off the rails a little bit and that's part of your job as a leader is to stay back be detached at that 10,000 foot level and be able to really focus in on certain problems. So you have, you're having a conversation and maybe you're detecting some sort of frustration or some sort of a challenge that that person's having, or they're not meeting the expectations, even if they think they are. This is where your leadership cape has to come in. So you've used active listening already, open-ended question, inquiry, um, open in, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, what are your feelings on? But now there's a, there's an issue coming up. So now what do you do? As I said, you put your cape on. This is now where you're going to be earning the big bucks because you're going to leverage another active listening tool. And that's what we call restatement. So what you would do is you would restate and say, okay, Hey, you know, what I'm hearing you say is this, is that correct? Boom. Absolutely. So that's now your opportunity to validate or at least check in to make sure that you're on the right path, that you're listening or that you're hearing the right things, right? That you're picking up the right, right, um, right messages, whether they're verbal or not, right? So you've done the open-ended question. You now restate to make sure you're understanding correctly. And let's say now that you have a concern about it, right? Maybe it's a concern about this individual's performance, just for argument's sake. Okay, this is now where we insert what's called an I message. An I message is part of a B method, as I call it. And the B method is the behavior, what is the emotion, 
and what is the effect, okay? So the B method, I talk about this all in my difficult conversations guide um, the, that's free to download. So the behavior, what is the behavior that you're, you're going to be addressing? What is the emotion? that you feel, not that they feel, that you feel. And what is the effect of that? So it starts with this I message. So an example would be, hey, you know what, uh, uh, Lionel, I'm concerned about your perceived lack of diligence around updating the action log. The effect is when I go in and check just for a quick update, it's not up to date, so I'm not sure exactly where you're at and I can't support you properly. So the, using the B method, that behavior, the emotion and the effect, you are, first of all, you're taking ownership for it. You're not saying that you, 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 like you suck, you're terrible, you need to be updating the action log, for example. You're saying that, hey, this is, this is my feeling. I'm concerned about this and here's the effect, right? So the behavior, not updating the action log, the emotion, I'm concerned. The effect is I can't support you. I can't get a good status update. All right, so now we start to hone in a bit more and address, start to address that particular problem or that challenge. See how this is working so far? They are going to now answer, obviously. And so we have to determine one of two things and it comes down to these two things and only two words but so profound in deciding how to hold somebody accountable, right? So we figured out that there's, a, there, there's an issue. What do we do about it? Well, we have to determine one of two things. Is it a skill issue or is it a will issue? Skill versus will, those two things. So an example if, for, for it to be a skill issue, it would be something like the individual is willing to do the job but they're unable to, okay? So they're willing, but they're unable. So an example, or so that would be something like um, uh, they're unable to, so they don't have access to certain systems, for example, or they don't have the training to update uh, or to do a proper Gantt chart or, or financial analysis, or they don't have the time. Maybe they have so many different priorities on their plate and they don't have an opportunity, but they want to, they want to do a good job. So they have the skill, like that they're, they're willing and able, but they're just not able to meet it, right? So that's one area. So if it's a skill that will require a different train of thought and, and a different pathway. Now, the other one is a will issue. And this one is a little bit more challenging, admittedly. So this is a situation where they probably have the skill and so they have access to systems, they have the training, they have the experience, they have the autonomy, they have the proper workload, they have the resource, all of those other things, but they're not doing the job, okay? They're not doing the job. Previously in the skill, they weren't doing the job, but man, they were, they were, they were wanting to, right? They were able to. In this example, they're able to, but they're not willing to. Okay. Those are the two, two paths. Now, the reason it's so important is obviously they're, they should require different approaches. But what I think often happens us as leaders is we tend to leap towards the performance management, right? We, we become the heavy, we become the bad cop in this because let's face it. We have all of these examples of, of, what ha what's going on here like like th they're just not getting it they don't understand all of those other things right so we often just get triggered by that because that's maybe not how we work right we don't we work without direction we work without being having our hands held or whatever so we can tend to get quite angry also with that anger or that frustration or that stress comes our ability or our desire to micromanage Okay. So if it's that skill issue, then let's talk about that. What do we do next? Well, we can do a few different things. Obviously, once we've had this dialogue, then we are wanting to figure out what 
what they need, what they need. So this is again where active listening comes in. You ask the open-ended question and then through a dialogue, a two-way dialogue, you can start to figure out the problem and, and then offer the support up that that individual needs, right? But remember, they have the skill, right? So, so, so they're, they're, they're wanting to do it. They're able to do it. Now you coach them. You don't performance manage them. You coach them. So that's really, really important. Now, that isn't to say that that's going to be easy. So part of that coaching is identifying some of their challenges and really addressing them kind of step by step. It's really difficult to just kind of and, and tackle everything at once. This is going to be a process for you. And maybe it requires a longer term solution, things like training or whatever the case might be. But that's your job as a leader. Okay, so you're going to be supportive, you're going to be positive, you're going to coach them, you're going to mentor them, maybe you're going to put them together with somebody else, maybe you're going to reduce their workload a little bit more for the time being so they can focus on other things, right, or focus on developing. That's your job as a leader, support them. Now, the flip side, are those individuals that, you know, they just don't want to do the job, right? They just don't want to do the job. Yes, that gets more challenging. Yes, we would love for people to get up in the morning and be like super keen on doing great work. I will tell you that the vast majority of people, if in the right situation, the right circumstances, want to do a good job. Very few people wake up in the morning and deliberately like, oh, today I am going to F things up. That is my job. I'm going to go into work. I'm going to be cranky. I'm going to be lazy, I'm going to be obtuse, I'm going to be absent, all of those things. Very few people deliberately, consciously think that way. And if they're there, chances are somewhere along the line, management, the leaders have not had the conversations that we've already had or that we're having here on in this particular episode. So you have to remember something is driving their behavior. Something is driving their behavior. You need to figure out what that is. Is it going to be easy? No, not at all. So this is where you have to, again, enter into a dialogue. And it's not you imposing your will on them yet. Yet. Okay. So you need to establish what, what do they want? What do they need? Can, and then can you meet that? So it's a little bit different than they're willing to. In this case, they're, they're not willing to. So you have to dig a little bit deeper. Maybe it's a situation where they're ticked off that they're not receiving the right accolades, right? The, the right rewards. Maybe it's they just have a defeatist attitude, right? Like, oh man, this is just the worst. And well, we've tried this before. It's useless. Nobody ever listens to me or anything like that. So you have to try your best to accommodate those attitudes. And one of the analogies I often use, and frankly, we use this a little bit on my dad. So just a bit of background here. Um, so my parents, aging parents, my mom has dementia, my dad, early Alzheimer's now, as it turns out, which is no surprise, but now it's official. And um, so he was very reluctant to leave, um, leave, the family home, you know, where my mom and dad had lived for 40 some years and rightfully so. But my mom was in a situation where she absolutely needed help. She was not able to take care of herself. And my dad as as wonderful of a man as he is, he's just not wired to be a caregiver. So we spent a lot of time on trying to convince my dad that my mom and him needed to go to a, a better facility. So my brother and I sat down and we, well, we didn't literally sit down, but you know what I mean? We um, thought about it and said, okay, this is what we need to do. Because my dad was, was offering up negativity at every turn, right? And, and, you know, it was a cat and mouse game. So we finally had to figure out, okay, long term, long term, we got to look at this longer term than just the next conversation. We need to figure out what are those challenges? What are those issues that he is grappling with or, or clinging to? Whether it's legit or not, it was not up to us to determine that. The fact of the matter was he is clinging to it. So one was finances, for example. Okay, that's an issue. Another one is lack of control, or at least the perception of lack of control. My dad wanted control. 
right? There are a couple other ones too, and, and, and pride, you know, that he's not able to take care of my mom uh, and a few others, for example. So my brother and I just made a concerted effort to just, if you can visualize like a table, a table has four legs typically, right? So what you need to do is you need to view this a little bit longer term and not just in the moment. And so you have to start to now hone in on one of those legs of the table or, or multiple, but essentially visualize this legs of the table. And now it's your job to just, to just start working, chop, 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 chop on that leg of that table. So if it's a situation about, um, you know, my, my dad's pride, not, uh, you know, not being able to take care of my mom, for example, well, we work on that, we work on that. First of all, Hey, this isn't, you know, no harm, no foul on your side. In fact, when you move to the facility, um, you're going to be able to be with her even more and you'll be able to help her more because those basic needs that she has, you don't have to worry about those. Other people will have that um, as, as part of their job. So you can, you're still looking after her. You're still going to be an advocate for her, all of these things. And you can just see, mm, yeah, okay. But it's a consistent chop, 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 chop. Another one is, you know, he's got friends in the neighborhood lived there for 40 years. He's like, well, I'm sure going to miss my friends. Well, to which my brother and I are like, dude, you would see your friends once a week at golf during the summer. During the winter, you rarely see anybody. Well, that's true. But every time he brought it up, we just would just chop, chop, chop that, that leg of the table. Finances was another one and so on and so forth. So we took a, a, a much more specific and concerted and deliberate um, approach with with my dad and so he's late 70s early Alzheimer's cranky well not not cranky that that's unfair that is really unfair he's actually he's been handling things really really well all things considered lots of changes but uh, you know somebody that, that that's old school in terms of you know pride and and not really being a good caregiver and it took a long time but my brother and I through concerted effort and long discussions we just made sure that he and I were on the same page and we just started to remove those legs of that table so maybe that will sometimes help so if you have somebody that's consistently negative right well okay what is the issue well wah, 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 wah. okay fine then. And don't go over the top. Just be subtle about it. Just be subtle. Just start to, to remove that, that, that leg of that particular table. And then go on to the next one. And then you go on to the next one. Is it easy? No, not at all. Not at all. But remember, if you're setting expectations and if you're leading other, if you're leading people effectively, you're going to have a little bit more time to handle these types of situations rather than just being so busy that you're just skipping across the surface, right? So Think about that in terms of, of the analogy. And then let's say that, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to work with them. You're trying to remove those, those legs of that table, those beliefs, which are BS, you know, and all the stories that are associated. So let's say that you finally, you know, you're not getting anywhere. Well, unfortunately, sooner rather than later, you will have to go the performance management route. So what that means now is you revert back to the expectations framework where you unfortunately have to performance manage them. That's the law of Toyland. So you go from, you know, working with them, removing some of those barriers, changing their beliefs, like removing the obstacles, at least their perceived obstacles, obstacles. And then, um, you know, if they're still not getting it, you, you have an obligation, moral, legal, fiduciary, whatever, to now handle it in a little bit more harsher, for lack of a better word, fashion. That means performance management. So you go back to what are the expectations? And unfortunately, you do have to micromanage the individuals. Now, if you're working in a labor relations you know, situation, I completely understand those challenges. I, I get it. I get it. From a, a management perspective, sometimes that's really challenging. But also in my experience, a lot of times you can head issues off at the pass if you're engaging them early and you're having good conversations and good dialogue with them. And then you've re also built up some respect influence, which is uh, another topic. And I've done numerous episodes on, on respect influence, but you can often stop 
the problem from getting too big if you're addressing it. But the, here again is the issue. You as a leader, you have to monitor, right? You have to assess and then you adjust as you need to. You're not just ignoring your folks. You're figuring out the problems before they get big. And then once you start to identify those problems, is it somebody that's willing, but they're unable to, or is it somebody that's able to, but they're unwilling? Because if they're willing, but unable, that's a coaching issue. That's a resource issue. That's a mentorship issue. That's a whatever it is. But if they're able to, but unwilling, ugh, darn it, start to chop those, those legs off, figure out what those beliefs are and what those obstacles are in their heads. And that's stopping them from doing whatever. Chop, 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 chop. Move on to the next one. Chop, 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 chop. Eventually, though, even if you remove all of those legs and they start replacing, you know, other legs kind of on the fly, then unfortunately you do reach a point where you have to revert back to now performance management. And that's where that expectations framework comes in again. So there is no, unfortunately, easy answer with regard to like naysayers and, and you know, the, 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 the Eeyores of, of the world. It's exhausting. I totally get it. But that's the reality. And now part of the trick though too is not spending so much time on that individual that you ignore everybody else because that's also happened where you end up spending 90% of your time on 10% of your team. So it's not easy. This whole issue, these, these challenges aren't easy, but I've just laid out kind of a framework or a process by which to um, you know, really manage what, you know, manage the folks, manage those performances and things like that. My advice to you, if that's the case, if, if it's one individual and they have you know, a few different beliefs, treat them separately as much as you possibly can because you just want to make sure that you're focused and that you're having a key message. Now, does that mean you're ignoring the other three legs? No, you can take the odd chop at them, but it's kind of like um, focus, really, right? If you're trying to... Um, uh, if you're trying to get through somewhere, if you're trying to, to do something, the best option is always focus concerted efforts. But there again, same same idea. You just take those 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 legs and just start to chop them. Here's the here's a key point though. With regard to those beliefs and, and removing those barriers and chopping those legs, you have to make darn sure that everybody that is interacting with that individual has the same message. That's important. That's really, really important because the last thing you want is for that individual or those people to coalition build or, or, or that's really what it's called. It's called coalition or, or try to gain an alliance. Here's an example. I've worked quite a bit with my good friend Lee and uh, doing at risk youth. So these are the, the individuals that aren't, you know, that they're on, they're on the, 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 start of a bad path they're good kids for the most part but they're just they've met some poor influences they made some bad choices so they're what we would consider on the fringe of the system right so we will go out and um, do wilderness activities with them for numerous days and a whole bunch of reasons for that it, it, it treats uh, it gives them autonomy and confidence and and um, you know all of those other things well, one of the rules that we have, we have a few, but one of the ones that we, we have, and, and the rules are non-negotiable. One of the rules is if you're going to go have a smoke, yes, you're 15, yes, you're 14, that's a bad idea, but we're not going to really, this is not going to be the, the setting that we're going to cause somebody to stop smoking. But one of the rules is if you go off for a smoke or if you go off to the bathroom or, or you go off on your own, you're on your own. You do not go with anybody else because we are keenly aware that somebody, particularly negative people, will look. They'll be looking around and they will want to build a coalition. They will want to find like-minded people. They will want to find people that maybe they're not even like-minded yet, but they want to start to turn them. So they're going to be looking for 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 gaps in that protection, right? Gaps in, in, in the messaging. So if you're trying to chop a leg off a table and next thing you know, like you've got somebody else unwittingly undermining then that's going to be a problem and all you're doing is you're just allowing that 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 table to stay stronger so you have to be very very aware of that and that's hard to do but making sure that you're talking to your peers your your bosses and and everyone else that you possibly can as long as it's confidential and done respectfully to make sure that um you know hey we're all on the same page 
there's a challenge around this, but let's make sure that this is the message we're giving. And it's a, it's a, and my brother and I were calling it key messages. All right. What's our key message? This, this, this understanding that, for example, with my dad, cognitively, he's not able to process a ton. Right. And, and, and that's okay. That's okay. So we adjust our approach. And so we just have to keep pounding away on the key message. Leadership is, is 100% tactical. And we've done ourselves such a disservice with all these books. You know, just we, 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 we don't talk enough in my estimation. This is why I, I'm really focused on the content that I'm focused on is, is we don't, we don't pay attention to the details. We don't pay attention to leadership being in the moment. And, and I have huge respect for a whole bunch of thought leaders, but at the, at the end of the day, leadership is in the moment. It's navigating the potholes, the, the, the changes in the road, the difficulties, the tough conversations, the, the performance management, all those things. It's not about inspiration. It's not about all of this stuff. It is, but, but really at the end of the day, it's can you talk to folks? Can you support them? Can you empower them? Can you make good decisions? Uh, can you follow known processes in the moment? And that's exactly what I focus on. So without further ado, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention with this. And our next episode, we'll be talking about accountability, not for other people, but for you. And that's a tough one. This is going to be an interesting and tough tough, uh, tough episode for some of us. So we'll see you then. Thanks everyone.